Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Wellness Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, I want to just quickly go over assessing the patient's skin when doing your primary assessment and how checking their color, their temperature, their moisture can really give you some insight as to their overall perfusion. So really take it as an important sign you can look for when assessing your patient and not just a way of filling out your ambulance chart and another box to check off. Think about it as ways that checking the skin color, the temperature, uh, and, and the moisture and its overall appearance can give you clues to what's going on with the patient. Now, with skin uh, color, especially in light skin patients, it can really reflect the status of the circulation that's really underlying uh, the skin, immediately underlying the skin, and this includes even oxygen saturation of the blood. Now, uh, in people of color, you might not really see that as readily, but you might be able to assess it by doing things looking at a patient's mucous membranes if they are a patient of color to help you determine their circulatory status. Now, when blood vessels um, supplying the skin become dilated, what happens is the skin will become warm and it will become pink. And when those, those same blood vessels that supply the skin wind up constricting, um, or even the patient's cardiac output drops, the skin is going to become pale. You're going to get that model look, such as in this, this picture here, and the patient's skin will also become cool. So if the patient doesn't get enough oxygen, you're also going to have issues with the patient become uh, cyanotic. They might become that bluish color or even that dusky gray, you know, hypoxia or even things like narcotic overdoses can wind up uh, desaturating the blood and blood and causing that cyanosis. Now pallor or that white color of the skin for patients, this is going to occur if you've got arterial blood flow that is slowing down a season to certain parts of the body and you know things like a blood clot or, or a lot of massive bleeding. But in addition to that, things like hypo hypothermia is also going to give you that white, that pallor, pallor look as well as the body ends up shunting blood to those core organs, those core parts of the body that need the body needs to survive and to function and taking the blood away from the extremities and extremities and giving the patient that um that whitish pallor look. So Really, real quick here, just some quick overview here. If the patient's skin is red or flushed, some of the symptoms and some of the causes of that might just be something as simple as the fever. It might be that the patient's very hypertensive. It could be an allergic reaction. It might even be a late sign of carbon monoxide poisoning. We get that cherry red uh, look to a patient. Um, patient, again, if they're white, that pallor look, that could be from, again, that excessive blood loss, that shunting going on. It could be from that hypothermia we talked about. Even fright can actually wind up giving a patient that white or pallor look as well. Now, what about the cyanosis? Well, again, we mentioned it could be hypoxemia going on and that oxygen, oxygen desaturation, that bluish cyanotic look or that grayish type look. And then modeled. Well, this is a picture here of what a modeled skin would look like in this slide here. And this is when you have a really, you know, big cardiovascular event usually going on, something like shock um, that's happening and causing a lot of shunting of the skin. Um, so what about when we look at the patient and actually touching their skin? And what can that tell us? Well, really try to go ahead and touch the patient. Your skin temperature can really... Um, rise as the peripheral blood vessels dilate and in it what happens when it falls um the blood vessels end up constricting so things like fever or a high um, environmental type of temperature are usually going to stimulate that vasodilation whereas something like shock is going to want to give you that vasoconstriction. So normal skin, a lot of times, it's, it's usually warm. It's going to be warm and dry. And the dryness or the moisture of the skin is usually determined a lot of times by the sympathetic nervous system. And the stimulation of that nervous system 
is like in shock or severe stress or pain uh, can cause that sweating that you're going to see as well at diaphoresis. So depression of the sympathetic nervous system, in contrast, um, is going to wind up um, causing the skin to that area to become abnormally dry and abnormally cool, something like uh, injury to uh, the, the thoracic or even the lumbar spine can actually cause that. Now, when you look at the, the skin and you're touching the skin, just real quick, uh, if the patient's skin is hot and dry, that's usually due to an excessive body heat, something like um, a heat stroke or hyper hyperthermia. Uh, if the patient's skin is hot and wet, well, that's usually because a reaction to um, an increase of internal and external type temperature. You know, just like if you work out or you're in the, in the heat a lot or something like that, you're going to get hot and you're going to get wet. What about cool and dry? Well, that's usually if you're exposed to cold a lot. You get that pallor, okay? You get that um, whiteness from being the, the, the hypothermia, okay? So think about that, cool and dry. And what about cool and wet? Well, that's usually a lot of times is the shock uh, instance where you've got that diaphoresis happening, okay? And you know, where you get that, again, that, that um, stimulation of the uh, sympathetic nervous system causing that diaphoresis, okay? So when we say wet, we're talking about you know, really diaphoretic type patients. They're going to shock, they're shunting the blood, and you're going to feel them, and they're going to be, you know, cold and cool and, uh, you know, get that typical cool, pale, diaphoretic type of uh, description for the patient's skin. So listen, I know this is pretty quick uh, overview here, um, but just remember that the patient's skin can be a clue to what's going on with the patient. If you have a patient and their skin does not look right to you, it looks pale, or it looks too flushed, it looks it's cool, or they're diaphoretic, it, take it as a clue that something else is going on that you need to look a little further and do your full assessment and take that into into account with everything else that you're looking at when you assess the patient. So listen, I hope you can use these Monday minutes um, in your daily activity. Remember, the next time you get a patient, really check their skin. Really look at it. Really feel it. Really touch it. And get a good assessment and use that as your overall patient assessment. Till next Monday, this is Jim Hoffman. And as always, stay safe.